now that uh, we've let the joint and seam cure, uh, I can see that there's a couple of areas that uh, the substrate can be seen below. Um, I'll show you a close-up in a bit, but uh, there's spots where the um, the rough edge of the plywood is still exposed and would be a capillary uh, um, break, or it would not be a capillary break. So we're just going to uh, touch those areas up before we go on to putting on the uh, Fast Flash product. And because uh, this is uh, a product that binds at the molecular level, we can uh, quite easily do uh, patches and it'll be like the uh, patch never existed. pretty good. So, as I've been saying all along, one of the benefits of this product is that there's no such thing as reverse lapping. So, I'm not going to uh, be able to seal the electrical uh, nipple, the hose bib, or the HVAC until I know what their exposure should be uh, proud of the finished uh, wall. I won't know that until I've put on the waterproofing, put on the strapping, and started to detail the cladding. The beauty is that I can do the sealing of those three components at any point in the process as long as they are still exposed and uh, accessible. Um, I can put the, uh, the, the, the product that we put on last is Cat5. I can put Cat5 onto the wall. I can then put joint and seam around those penetrations, flash them out with uh, fast flash, and then reapply the Cat5. And we're going to have a homogeneous product at the end that acts as one layer. And uh, there's no such thing as reverse lapping. So uh, if you're on a job site and uh, your uh, electrician uh, might have forgotten to put in uh, the rough openings for the, uh, the electrical nipples and has to do so later. It's a matter of drilling the hole through, setting the right profile uh, d depth uh, out from the sheathing, and you can uh, then seal it up at any time. As long as it's accessible, you can seal it up and you don't have to worry about uh, uh, back lapping with the other products that were already installed like you would on a sheeting material. So now we're going to uh, uh, start uh, applying the fast flash. So before we uh, start uh, showing the installation of the fast flash and talking about the, that uh, product, uh, we need to talk about the window sill. Uh, all of these uh, products are what are termed vapor open, watertight products, and the the science behind them is that the pore size will allow for water in its vapor form to get through the coating, but when in the liquid form and therefore much larger molecules, it will not get through the coating. The scientific uh, community that, uh, that I've reviewed um, and the various uh, building envelope scientists and engineers that I've talked to are extremely um, cautious and concerned about putting any vapor open product on a flat surface that's going to regularly see moisture in liquid form. Uh, so a window sill would obviously um, meet that criteria. Um, and it, it's not that they're expecting uh, liquid water to get through a, a membrane or a product that is vapor open. Uh, Mother Nature is a powerful force and it always wants to be in equilibrium. Uh, so the, the concern is that there's a vapor drive through that material uh, that is then uh, aided along by the capillary action of whatever the substrate is. In this case it would be plywood and 
um, two by fours. Uh, so I was concerned enough about uh, the science behind this that I did my own uh, inverted uh, inverted water test, which I'll post on another uh, blog entry. Uh, but basically, I filled a, a canning jar full of some water. Uh, I put it over top of a, a piece of wood that had these products applied to it, turned it upside down and, and sealed the jar to the wood so that water wouldn't leak out around the, the joint. And uh, Then I've been uh, measuring the humidity of the wood uh, underneath the membrane uh, as well as the weight of the whole assembly. The weight's been going down, the humidity has been going up. The, the, the wood moisture has been going up is the, is the better term. Uh, so it confirms the uh, concerns of the scientific community. As a result, uh, in my um, mock-up here and in, in my owner build that I plan on doing, I will be using a uh, water impermeable and vapor impermeable self-adhered membrane of some sort. Uh, these products do not react with any of the, uh, the membranes. Uh, they stick to a majority of them. Any of the foil-faced uh, membranes, they stick to quite well. Uh, so that's how we are going to detail uh, this uh, window sill. In this video, we will use uh, some foil tape to uh, simulate a thicker and more robust SAM that I would typically use, something like uh, PS45 from Protector Wrap. Uh, but I only have the tape on site today, so that's what we'll be using for the demonstration. So at this time, uh, I'm going to go ahead and install the, uh, the simulated uh, self-adhered membrane uh, onto the sill. So as, as mentioned, we're going to use this uh, metal foil tape as our simulated membrane. Uh, it will be uh, waterproof. Uh, on a real job site, I'd want something a little bit more uh, robust than tape. Uh, but uh, this should perform uh, quite adequately for our tests and our, our water and air penetration tests. It's um, not too important to get it uh, wrapped up the jams uh, because the, uh, the R-Guard is, is waterproof. Uh, we just don't want sitting water on it, and uh, we're not going to have, obviously, sitting water on the jams. Uh, so we just need to get it onto the, uh, the flat surface here uh, and uh, detail it uh, accordingly. I'm going to have uh, very little of it on the, uh, the vertical surface. Uh, all we have left now is to put in two uh, small darts just to protect that corner. That's probably an overkill because, again, you're not going to have sitting water there and, and the, uh, the material below is, uh, is waterproof. Um, if I was doing this uh, on a job site, I might be inclined to put uh, the R-Guard Fast Flash on the sill first. Uh, so that this uh, front edge, vertical edge, is uh, detailed. Uh, I'm just going to put that material over top of this. It sticks really well to, uh, to uh, foil. So I'm going to make some darts. Uh, basically you want, um, it's also called a bow tie. You want there to be at least uh, one inch. Um, between the uh, two inside points of the bow tie. Make mine a little bit wider. There we go. There's one. And it goes over top of uh, the, uh, the join right here because that, uh, that forms a, a little bit of an opening and you just want that extra protection. Again, there's uh, our guard product below, so there's very little chance of water getting through there anyway. And this is just uh, sort of multiple layers of protection here. 
as I am going to have this tested uh, at BCIT for my class, I want to make absolutely sure it's not going to leak. My uh, reputation to a certain extent is uh, based on that. Make sure we don't have any bridging. That's uh, that's nice and tight. Okay. If you end up with too much bridging, um, then when you put the window in, if you don't have enough uh, tolerances on each side, you're going to rip this uh, with the installation of the window. So obviously that would not be something we would want. You want to center your uh, inch uh, inch uh, at the beginning or the middle so that it's uh, right over top of your seam and then you're just molding it down over top and up. That uh, guarantees you a nice uh, watertight uh, corner. Now if you weren't using a liquid applied uh, membrane uh, then you would for sure need to be uh, doing this anyway. Um, and this is best practice. You put your uh, your sill membrane on first, uh, wrap it up uh, the jams about two inches, uh, then you put your darts in on uh, on each side to protect this uh, these key interfaces. Put an extension uh, of the membrane up the jam so that you're four to six inches. Now you can uh, layer that uh, in with the sheathing uh, membrane uh, quite easily. So now we're going to uh, install the fast flash. The fast flash goes around the uh, rough openings uh, of doors, windows. Uh, you would extend it out from any of the penetration uh, details. Uh, and you extend it out from the opening uh, about six inches uh, on all sides. So that's what we'll do now. The fast flash is just like the joint and seam. It uh, comes in a tube, you caulk it out and then you spread it with your uh, uh, Bondo spreader uh, just like you did with the joint and seam. So now we've uh, detailed the uh, the jams, the sill, and the head. Uh, now we'll go ahead and uh, detail the uh, six inches out from that uh, interface. Okay, looks like uh, window opening's done. I will just go ahead and do the uh, interface uh, at the corner of the parapet wall and the, uh, the walls and the floor. Uh, this is to simulate uh, applying a liquid uh, balcony membrane. Uh, I will post more information about how to detail this if it was, uh, say, uh, a vinyl uh, solid sheet uh, membrane for a balcony. Uh, but uh, this is uh, completely compatible with most of the liquid 
applied uh, membranes and you would just uh, detail the edges as we're doing here and then at the end you would apply your balcony membrane uh, over top. Okay. Okay, we've done the uh, inside corners. Had to spread it a little thin. Uh, I'm out of, uh, didn't uh, estimate properly, or I've probably put it on way too thick in other areas. Uh, but I'm out of fast flash, but I've uh, done the window opening. Uh, I've saved a little bit for doing these penetrations, because uh, I need to make sure that they don't leak uh, for the air test. Uh, but uh, you get the idea. Okay, thank you.